so we're going to make a really simple nightlight. Um, the idea is this ping pong ball will light up when it gets dark and it'll turn off when it gets light. And um, we're going to try and do this in just a really simple way. So first off, we need the light. Um, because I've got the hole in the bottom here, we could just use an LED. Um, as it happens, I wanted a nice warm light and I didn't have a LED that was a nice warm white one. So instead, I used a um, one of these, which is a, just a um, battery powered LED string. And I just cut off one of the LEDs in the end. So what I've done is I've got a um, the MDBT42 board here. I've soldered on a, um, a battery header and I've soldered on one of these LEDs with a little resistor. This one's uh, 300 ohms because I didn't really want anything that was um, uh, that was going to make the LED too bright. So now this is going to be running off a battery pack that's just going to sit sort of in the base. And the important thing is going to be to make sure that it lasts a really long time. So I have a power meter here. Um, this is made using an Esprino board. Um, uh, I don't have details of exactly how this was made online at the moment, but um, but there will be a tutorial on this shortly. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this into the power meter and we're going to see how much power it draws so that we can make sure that we're making something that will actually will last a long time on a um, uh, on the charge. So immediately uh, this is drawing, it's around 50 millionths, 60 millionths of an amp. Um, so first off, we're just going to go and connect to this. When we connect, the power usage does go up a bit um, because it goes into a kind of high performance communication mode, which, which means that it reacts very quickly. So um, you can see that now it's drawing kind of 0.8 of a milliamp. Uh, we can try turning this LED on, which is attached to pin D15. So if I do D15 dot right one, it will turn on. And you can see the power draw now goes up to 2.4 milliamps. So um, this battery is about uh, 2,400 milliamp hours. So um, that means it's going to last for about, well, about a thousand hours um, with this light on. So the next step is we want to figure out um, how we can turn the, um, the light on and off when it gets dark. And we don't actually have a sensor on this board. But what we do have is a um, one of the LEDs is attached to an analog input. So LED2 is a green LED. So uh, if I say analog read uh, from LED2, I'll get a value here for the amount of light. And if I cover this up with my hands, you'll see that value will go down. Um, and actually, if I turn off the, the first LED, um, because it was shining straight on the sensor, we should start to see values that are a lot lower. And now if I cover it up with my hand, that will drop down significantly. So first off, we've encountered a bit of a problem, which is that um, we don't want this light to affect this reading. So the obvious thing to do at the moment is um, we look at this value, and if I cover that up with my hand, put it in shade, that value goes down. So you can say that as soon as the value gets below 0.18, we'll turn the LED on. So if we try that, um, we'll just do this every half second for the moment. So every 500 milliseconds, um, we'll just store these as global variables. So we'll have the light value and whether it's on or not. And we make the light value equal to analog read. And we'll say, on is on if that light value is less than 0.18. Uh, and then we'll turn the LED on. So if I upload this, nothing seems to happen immediately. If I cover it with my hands, hopefully we'll see the LED, but now it's turning on and off because the second that the um, that, that LED turns on, it's um, it's affecting this. So to get a more accurate reading, let's put that LED inside the um, inside the ball there. 
um, and you can see that at the moment it is um, it is flickering a lot and in fact the ball is um, is getting in the way of the the light going to this so it's having very much the same effect but if we look at the light values we're getting they're sort of between 0.16 and 0.18 what we need to do is add some hysteresis to this so that it will only turn on when it gets very dark and it will turn off when it gets very light um, and it's pretty easy to do that so we'll say if light value is less than 0.16 we turn it on and if the light value is greater than should we say 0.2 we turn it off okay so if I cover this up oh, it's, it's on at the moment okay so it actually needs a little bit more light available to, um, to turn it off. So let's go for a slightly, um, slightly lower value for this. Okay, so now it's off. If I cover it up, it will turn on and it's no longer flickering. And now if I move my hands, it will turn off, back on. Okay, so that's, that's great. Uh, if we look at the power usage on this now, um, the power usage is currently uh, about 0.9 milliamps, and pretty much all of that is Bluetooth traffic. So just so that we can discount it, we'll do set connection interval, which will um, put us into a low power connection mode. It will make everything much slower to talk to the device, but we'll see the power usage drop right off. So. Um, Let's have a look at that. So for the moment, we're looking at about uh, 60, 70 microamps, which is, is doing pretty well. Um, but we don't necessarily have to check this so often because the amount of light on this isn't going to change so much. So let's just do it every two seconds instead. OK, and if we try that, upload it, you can see everything's running a little bit more slowly now because we've changed the connection interval. Now this is uploaded, the, um, the amount of power being used is, is still pretty small. So if I, if I cover this up, we may still find that now this is uncovered, it's still, um, it's still going to flicker. Okay, now that's good, it's still, oh, yeah, it is, okay, let's cover that up. Okay, so we are using about 1.6 milliamps with the light on. Um, so that all looks pretty good. The next thing to do though is we don't really want it to be connectable by Bluetooth at all. So all we're going to do is we're going to um, say nrf.sleep to turn Bluetooth off and there are ways to um, to get this so that you can reprogram it um, but to make it nice and easy we're just going to make it so that when you press a button it turns Bluetooth back on. Um, so nrf.break like that and make it happen when you press the button. Um, and that is basically all we need. Um, so we're going to take that and we'll save it to flash. And when it's saved, it will run and that will actually cause Bluetooth to be disconnected. So now we're no longer connected. Um, we'll see that now we're no longer connected. We're drawing very, very little power. So this is, um, sort of 20 millionths of an amp. So it's going to last an extremely long time on a battery while the LED's off. And now the LED's on, it's, whoop, force it to stay on. It's going to draw, yeah, about one and a half milliamps. So um, this is going to last an extremely long time, even if it's on for 12 hours a day. Um, you're still going to get several months of, of use out of this. So let's take this away. We attach it to our battery. And we'll put it in our, um, just put that elastic band around to hold it in nicely.
There we go, and that's our light. And now, if I cover it all up and it gets dark, it'll light up. Um, and so this this obviously only works because um, this actually has a uh, has a clear case on it that's letting light through to the onboard LED. Um, if you wanted to use a a solid case, you could actually just put an, another LED or some kind of light sensor outside and um, make a screener work using that. But that's our nightlight. Thanks for watching.